We're back to meet another one of our award winners now. Um, and this one is the Institutional Award, uh, which this year is awarded to the Certified Environmental Practitioner Certificate or Scheme in Australia and New Zealand. And I'm really delighted to be joined by Alex Blood, who was very involved in the development of this, um, sat on the board for a long time, was chair for a long time, um, who can explain a little more, a little bit more about the background to it and where we are. Um, but maybe Alex, if we kick off, I, I think really this, this award represents almost this, a culmination of several years of, of efforts from general certificates to more specific and specialized uh, areas. So can you talk a little bit about some of the highlights of that and how we've got where we are? Oh, Definitely. So the certification scheme was set up by the Environment Institute for Australia and New Zealand all the way back in 2004. And it was at a time, I think, where there are a number of environmental incidents globally, and it was recognised and felt that for that part of the world, there needed to be a program that environmental specialists who wanted to be known for quality and ethical practice um, could demonstrate that independently. And so the scheme was started. And it's now 20 years, ironically, later. So it's it's lovely to be picking up um, an award on the 20th anniversary. But I think I'll, I'll split the a couple of highlights. One, I think you have to start with is people. So this program was developed by volunteers. Um, it has had a small paid staff that's been built over time. But the heart and soul of it has always been the incredible commitment and technical contribution by um, volunteers. And they they touch on all parts of the program from when you set up a certification, establishing the criteria, what, what does competent look like, what is quality, right through to um, past chairs and board members, also all volunteers who built the guts of the operation itself. So your systems, your financial systems, your operating systems, your procedures, your policies. And I dread to think if you added that up, the um, number of hours, but I, I think that's been a real standout. And those, and over time, those volunteers have come from more and more diversified backgrounds, started by the Environment Institute. Um, it was originally members of the Institute, but, you know, if I look back at last year, we had regulators from different states, um, local government representatives from different areas in New Zealand, consultants, um, academic industry, and that real diversification of people participating, which is I think reflects the maturing of the scheme and the reach. And I've always believed that the more diversity you have, the more robustity. So I think people piece for me is, is a highlight. We're now over 1,200 um, certified persons using the scheme for their profession. And we started out as a general environmental practice. Um, over time, the idea that there are specialties um, was needed. We took on um, a site contamination specialty, very much driven by a couple of environment protection authorities in Australia who require reports that are submitted as part of contaminated land management to be signed off by someone who is certified and CMBP inherited, upgraded and then manages the scheme that provides that verification and that's by far our largest specialty. Um, you can imagine the significant technical competency tests that go into that because the EPA is very much driven by a need for quality and de-risking um, the reports when they get to their point for assessment. And over time, that matured um, to impact assessment, uh, heritage, geomorphology, and I think the youngest of the um, specialisations is social impact assessment. And over time, I think what it's shown is a maturing of the field of environmental technical work to show that there are actually disciplines within that very broad term and increasingly social is a very specialty field that is becoming more and more high risk, whether it's through consultation or 
um, poor benefit sharing in developments all over the world, yeah. um, that, that that was our most um, recent piece. And, and to complement that, the other thing I find really interesting was the pickup is very different, but in New South Wales, um, which is where Sydney is, a couple of years ago in collaboration with the um, Department for Planning, which oversees assessment for major projects, the new major projects, whether they be schools, mines, um, roads, rail, everything, in New South Wales decided that they too were having challenges with the question of quality and had realised there had been mistakes from a policy perspective in documents submitted by the private sector for assessment. And they wanted to develop a scheme to de-risk it a bit for them, raise the idea of quality reputation because things can be challenged, development decisions can be yeah. challenged in New South Wales. And so a couple of years ago, the CMVP and actually the Planning Institute separately launched what's called the REAP scheme, and that is a specialist New South Wales impact assessment um, product, a, a certification. And now to be able to submit a major project assessment, you must be certified as a REAP, uh, a REAP sort of saying that, that would a REAP certified practitioner. So there's a real maturing. Um, yeah, yeah, really. It's really you're picking up on that. I mean, you 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 know, you talked to a couple of things there: expertise, sort of ethics, the integrity, the independence of the uh, the person who is certified, but. Uh, how important and how difficult was it to sort of convince the sort of external bodies, the authorities, that that this was a, a legitimate cert- certificate and a way of sort of assessing quality or guarantor of quality? With, I presume that that was a really major step at the same time as sort of the internal dynamics of it as well. Yeah, I, I think in the most recent example for impact assessment, there was a maturing of CMVP and, a, and a, a reputation, I think, of the Environment Institute, definitely in New South Wales, that um, they started the, they started a conversation that had been going on for some years um, with them on a constant uh, networking and dialogue to understand their needs that led to that. I think all the way back when with site contamination and and how that came to be even before CMVP got involved, government clearly had a need um, and it was driven in the Australian context by, they call it the heads of EPA, where they meet um, across the country and they talk about challenges. And already back then, site contamination was a huge risk, risk to them as a government agency yeah. and a risk if they get that wrong of the flow on effects being significant. So that's been around quite a while. Certainly when I joined the board, um, that was uh, that was going through the update where CMVP took over, and the, but the growth has been exponential. And I must call out all the people who've contributed to the advisory committee for that, and the registrars who go over the application. This is all about um, maintaining quality because the EPAs, whilst they value what you can provide and that independence and the repeatability. They're always going to want to also see that you maintain people, that you are still checking in on people because should they ever have a problem or a complaint, they're going to want to be able to liaise with you because, you know, some of these projects are actually quite um, high risk and dangerous in terms of the possible effects they could have on human health or or receiving environment. So it's been really interesting the one thing I'll say, New Zealand and Australia's journeys are really similar and different. So New Zealand um, has recognised uh, certification, but it's not mandatory there um, with site contamination, for example. And in Australia, it's different state by state. So South Australia, Tasmania, New South Wales, those environment protection authorities recognise the CMVP site contamination. The others haven't gone down that path. So Government policies are quite different everywhere you go. The understanding of risk is there. Some seem more hesitant to only go with one program. They want to provide competition. Others, they're just not maturing in there. And I think what happened in New South Wales with impact assessment is a sign of great interest to see whether 
any other states follow. And certainly yeah. the riskier I think the public sphere is on outrage, the more sensitive regulators are. Um, but, yeah, it, it's very, very varied. And, and I did uh, – even language is varied. So in New Zealand, an impact assessment person is called a planner. So an environmental planner in New Zealand is taking on the impact assessment portfolio in the way that I think a lot of IIA people would think about that. But in Australia, a planner is not an impact assessment person. It's a it's an interpretation of town policy. So it's yeah. more um, A must equal A and B must equal B. So that's been a really interesting thing too is all over the world everybody's lingo can be different and making sure you can pitch and find alignment of things um, that don't trap ourselves on some lingo. No, I mean, I mean, look, congratulations for for where you've got to. I mean, I I've certainly got some experience of certification in other industries, and it's uh, it's a constant process of quality control and upgrade and monitoring and your, re- your reputation is everything you can't cannot lose that you start to default on that and the whole thing really falls apart so what- really for me has always been too that obligation that you know the people who chosen to become certified with that program often most often it's driven by a professional need so you always have a responsibility to try you know, not try, you have a responsibility that you need to be in business for in perpetuity is the the ideal. But we've all seen some programs come and go. And I think that's quite a significant uh, obligation or duty that is a really good driver. And certainly a lot of the volunteers I've seen, you know, if you chat with them on, I guess, the theory or the philosophy of the certifi- of certification programs or chartership programs, and you really delve down, there is this sense of, uh, although I'm a volunteer, what, I, what I'm what i doing matters because it matters to the people that are certified yeah. and the people that know yeah. 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 So it's quite, it's a significant role, I think. Look, Alex, we've got to leave it there, but thank you very much for, for explaining something of the work. And I know that's, that's a very brief run through, the tiny, tiniest bit, but really a very... A richly deserved award to uh, recognise uh, that certification, the whole scheme, and the the way in which it's been put together in Australia, New Zealand. So, thanks very much for sharing some of that today. Thanks, Gary. And on behalf of everybody involved with this game, um, the award means a lot. And IAIA has certainly been a really strong supporter as we've developed. Great. Thank you.